Hello, this is Jamila. Who do we have with us today? Hello, this is Lisa. Hey, Lisa. I uh, saw on the chat that you work for NASA. You have an internship out there? Um, yeah, I'm hanging out there for the summer. <laughs> oh, that's nice. At the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Yeah, that must be exciting. Yes, ma'am. It is. There's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. We're still early. We're we are, yeah. yeah. Hi, everybody. This is Maitri from India. Hi, Maitri. What, time is, what time is it where you are? It's uh, 5.30 a.m. Oh, wow. So, but, I'm excited, but since it's my first meeting this time, I'm excited to join it. <laughs> so, for that reason, I'm early up today. Oh, wow. I'm so glad you're able to make it. <clears throat> I hope we live up to your expectations. But don't forget to eat breakfast. So, <laughs> don't let us get in the way of that. Okay. Have you thought more about the day of the week that would be good for everybody? I know you posted a survey. Yeah, so um, that question was sort of more general, just so that we know for future things go coming up, um, not just this one, but for other events that we might have planned. It looks like a lot of people seem to be saying um, Satur Saturdays and Sundays, and I think maybe Thursday is the next highest one after Saturdays and Sundays, um, which actually surprised me a little bit. But I guess it's not too surprising if everybody has work. <laughs> so, right. I just, was, I, I just wasn't sure if, you know, even though you have work, do you still want to give up your weekend? But it sounds like a good number of people do. Um, and it's not the whole weekend, obviously, just an hour or two. What do y'all think? About I think it's great. The weekends are great. Mm -hmm. So if we did weekend, like what time of day are you thinking? Uh, let's see. Not too early. Maybe around 2 or 3 mm -hmm. in the afternoon. Because people, they probably want to go out with their friends at night. Right. So want to try to do it before the evening hits for, for people. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Did we have anybody else join us? We're about to get started. And you don't have to say your name, but if you would like to participate, you, everybody is welcome to participate. Okay. Well then, um, oh, let me just go make sure yeah, that's what I thought. This is a weird system. Hello. Hey. How's it going? Good. How are you? Ooh, I'm okay. I'm okay. It's a Thursday. <laughs> the weekend is coming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So that means hopefully a little bit of relaxation or less stress, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, we have a carpet to clean, but it'll be it'll it'll be okay. It'll it'll be a good break. So I know we have Maitra, um, Lisa, Bethany on the call. Did anyone else? Would anyone else like to introduce themselves? My name is Jamila, by the way. In case you weren't aware of that. Um, I'll be helping facilitate today's discussion. Would anyone else like to introduce themselves? Hi, I'm Minakshi actually. So I, I live in the uh, Bay Area. I do my, uh, I did my PhD in biology and I'm interested to learn a little bit about like programming and coding. So I just found it and it's my first time here. Oh, okay. So welcome, welcome. Do you have, um, wait, remind me your name again. Uh, can Minakshi, you... you can call me Mina. Mina, okay, yeah. oh, welcome. Anybody else like to introduce themselves? Hi, 
Okay, well, even if you didn't introduce yourself, you're welcome to speak up at any time throughout the conversation. Um, I'm just going to go through um, a little bit of information about Women Who Code for anyone who's new. Um, this is specifically a, go a global track called Women Who Code Python, um, and so we are very passionate about a particular language called Python. Um, and let's see. Oops, there we go. Um, our goals here with Women Who Code is to empower um, women in particular to get the skills that they need um, to uh, develop in the technical field. Um, so we are trying to help educate individuals, companies, anyone who's interested in promoting, um, promoting women in technology and help build a global community of networking and mentorship. And so that's what we really, really hope to, to build definitely is this really strong community. Um, and so please feel free to participate whenever you, you would like. You have no obligation whatsoever to um, feel like you have to know everything in order to uh, participate. Because believe me, I don't know everything here. I'm just really interested in helping the study group work out. Um, Let's see. Code of, before we get started, just a reminder on the code of conduct, we are an inclusive community. So um, it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, um, even what programming languages you know or don't know, or what your techno technological, technological skill are, does not matter here. Um, so we want to respect everybody's background from wherever you're coming from. And if you do have a problem, encounter a problem while you're with women who code with other individuals, please be sure to let us know. Um, but just keep that in mind for our conversation going forward. Um, if you haven't already, please visit the womenwhocode.com website to find out other resources, opportunities for you to expand your leadership, um, scholarships, all sorts of great information out there to help build this community and make you feel a little bit more a part of it. Um, we are specifically about Python, but if you do have an interest in other tracks, um, front end development, blockchain, mobile development, data science, or even cloud, we do have global tracks out there that can help. And um, I just want to go ahead and say this real quick. If by chance, you're not speaking, if you don't mind going on mute, that'd be awesome. So we can just sort of um, Okay. And just so you know, we are a nonprofit organization, so we do appreciate our sponsors. So there are sponsors out there that are definitely helpful to us. Um, so, and we call McKinsey, Python, and Women Who Code. Let's see, I, do I have a chat going on here? <laughs> no, no worries. If you have to go, you are totally welcome to. You can make it every week to tomorrow, but that's okay. Um, Involved. Okay, so if you want to get more involved, please let us know. We actually have a leadership channel on our Slack group, and so you're welcome to jump in here and let us know that you'd like to be more involved in helping women who code Python grow. We are looking for anyone who's willing to help, so know that option is out there for you. Okay, um, we are on social media, so if you haven't already, please check us out. And if you want something to do this fall, we have a track summit coming up. So um, this is basically like a one day conference. So if you'd like to attend, uh, feel free to talk to us on Slack and we can get you some more information or just check out the website. Um, if you are particularly passionate about Python and you have something you'd like to share, please feel free to do that as well. Let us know and we have, um, we are taking calls for people who'd like to speak at this summit. So this is a great opportunity to get your name out there if that's what you wanna do. Um, um, please let us know in Slack and we will definitely help you out there. Okay, that's basically the big stuff. We're gonna go ahead and get into chapter four, which is about lists. Um, before we get into it, does anyone have any outstanding questions? You know what? I've been assuming everyone can see my screen. Is that a correct statement? <laughs> Anybody? Yeah, can see yes, the screen. Yes, we can yes. see it. <laughs> okay, good. So glad. 
I there has been a meeting or two I've gone a little too far and not realized anyone could see what I'm I'm showing. So, okay, we're gonna jump into chapter four. Um, chapter four was all about lists, um, lists, indexes, slices, um, tuples, on and on and on regarding um, this new different new type of data type. So, what did y'all think about this chapter? Just throwing it out there. Oh. For anyone who's new, just so you understand sort of the cadence of how we do this, we try to start off with about a 30 minute review of the chapter itself. Like we actually go through the chapter, not reading it, but just highlighting what we liked, what we thought was interesting, any questions that we might have had. And then at about the 30 minute mark, we're gonna we're going to uh, go over the practice questions at the end and then the practice projects at the end if anyone has some code that they just couldn't quite get working we'll see if we can help you get it working and understand what we we try to do during chapter four um my goal is to get through all of this like what the chapter was about and the questions before uh basically 50 minutes from now um and then if we'll do the code review sort of like after that um, to give a, enough time for everybody. But if y'all need to leave early, please feel free. You don't have to do whatever you need to do. I'll keep trying to check this little chat up here. If you can't talk, um, that's totally fine. Let me just make sure I've accepted everybody in. Okay. And um, you're welcome to ask questions whenever you want. Speak up whenever you'd like to, to say something or make a comment. Um, I'm just here to help facilitate. So, chapter four. What did you think about lists and this concept of lists? Well, for, for me, hi, this is Matari, by the way. Um, it, before I, I came to Python, it, it just reminds me of arrays. I mean, is it, is it, can it be said that it's basically an array or is it something uniquely different? To, it's very similar to an array to me, like from my background, my limited background in programming. I think of lists just like arrays as well. Um, but there do seem to be some unique characteristics that Python brings out that I never really noticed before. Anyone else have a different opinion about that? Um, so, so Python lists are based on arrays, but they are not arrays. Python actually does have an array type, but mm -hmm. no one who programs regularly in Python uses it. <laughs> really, uh, unless they're they're doing a library or something. So, so two big differences between a Python list and, and an array like you would see in JavaScript or C. Um, the first is that typically with an array, uh, it's what makes them fast. When your computer stores the data in memory, it stores it right next to each other. So all of the memory addresses are what are called contiguous or adjacent memory addresses. So an array has a block of memory. Um, and so when you go to get something out of an array, you go to that address and it's right there and, and that makes things fast. Lists do not necessarily have all of the things that they contain right next to each other in memory. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is arrays tend not to be mutable uh, for a lot of the languages that use them. Lists in Python, as you know, are mutable. You can change their contents. And one of the reasons you can do that is a list in Python is actually a set of pointers. So what a list really is, is sort of this reference. Um, it, the, 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 the items in the list are actually pointing to where the data is stored, but the list itself doesn't contain data. It contains references, which is what allows you to add new ones easily and, and reorder them. Um, so it, it's, it's really helpful, and I think it's, 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 it's really good to think of lists as arrays but underneath they, they aren't and he gets into that a little bit in this chapter um okay, as thank well as you. pointing to the data anyway <laughs> awesome thank you 
Now, now that now that you're all asleep, um, <laughs> we can go on. That's awesome. Like I totally remember when I was talking about arrays. Once upon a time, people talked about the memory behind them, and that's sort of the thing that you sort of forget about when you're just starting off programming. So that's really going to come into play at least when you're trying to program a little bit faster or more efficiently. Um, those types of things do matter. So thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, on the on the front though, this is sort of what a, a, a list looks like if you have not seen one already. Um, just so you know, we're going through chapter four. You might have a hard copy book of this, but it's also online at automatetheboringstuff.com slash chapter four. Um, and so we're just working our way down this, this page. And so here is like, this is an example of a list. Very, very simple. Just has the values in there and they're comma delimited. Um, and you can put anything. <laughs> All the data sets we've learned so far, you can put in strings, you can put in floats, you can put in uh, Boolean values, um, this none data type, and even this number as well. Um, and lists can also be assigned to variables. So that was um, another thing to, to keep in mind. Um, this is, I think, what this was the first thing that made me think it was very similar to an array was referencing, like being able to reference a very specific item in the list using this index feature. So if we're looking at this example that we see here, and I'll just do this picture, where it has cat, bat, rat, and elephant, you have four items in this list. And if you want to reference any one specific one, you put in the index of 0, 1, 2, 3. One of the very first things that you have to remember is that an index starts at the number 0, which is sort of different than normal. Um, was there anything about this section that anyone found particularly interesting or had questions about? So one of the things that I think is interesting, um, and please, people, stop me when I talk too much, but um, Python is nice in the fact that it's flexible. So you can make a list with those little brackets. You can also make a list by calling a list constructor, which is the word list with parentheses, which is a function that will make a list for you. Uh, so you can do both things. Um, and uh, you can also declare a completely empty list that you can then add things to later, which I really like. Um, so it can contain just about anything and also nothing, which is kind of nice. Yeah. That's interesting. You can have it set for later. Mm -hmm. Is, yeah. there, is there an advantage or disadvantage to calling lists with the constructor or just with the brackets? Is there a time when you want to do one and not the other? Or does it really not matter? That's an excellent question. And um, I typically use what's called the list literal, which is declaring it with the brackets. But some of the time, you might want to call the list constructor because you may be coming from a different data type, like a tuple, or, or a string, or you may be doing something um, where you're, you're, you're passing the result of a function. And it's, there are restrictions to what you can do inside the list literal, like the brackets, but when you call the list constructor because you're calling a function that is making a list for you, you have a little more flexibility about what you pass to it. So that may be one of the reasons. Uh, another reason why you might want to use the list constructor is that as you get it further along in your programming journey, you might want to customize the way it makes a list. So you might want to have a special type of list all for yourself for whatever reason to fit your need. And in that case, you would do what's called overwriting or adding to that list constructor so that you can you can make it your specialized type of list. So those are a few reasons I can think of off the top of my head. Um, I think the convention in Python usually is to, to use the literal uh, because it's, you know, it's easy to remember and it's a nice shortcut. So, so Bethany, just, just to clarify, is this what you mean if you see my screen? Exactly. This is an example of a list constructor where you're not using the brackets, but rather you're saying the list as a function and then inside of it, you're sort of building it out. Yes. And so if you notice here in this specific instance, what is inside of there is a tuple. 
Oh, yes, that's right. So one of the things that the list constructor does that the brackets will not is there is this uh, concept of unpacking. So you can feed the list constructor an iterable, uh, something that Python can loop through, and it will loop through it or unpack it for you and change it into a list. And so that's what you see here is you are passing it a tuple, which is a different data type. And the list constructor is unpacking. So it's taking the items, each of the items out of the tuple and placing them into a list. So right. it's doing a type conversion there. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and just so you know, there was a chat um, from Kunal. He mentioned that um, just some interesting things about lists when we were, we were talking about the list first array, he said that um, about you can do math with them if I remember that correctly. Oh yeah, I'm seeing here. So you cannot perform numerical operations and list elements all together. Well, in an array, you can. Yes, so there's, as you go down the path, there are widening differences between arrays and lists in many languages. And I forgive me because I haze out a little bit on Python. Um, arrays, all the data types match usually in an array. So that's another thing that makes them fast. So all the, the, you know, it'll be all numbers or it'll be all letters or it'll be all string oh. or something. And okay. so um, because of that, you can do, do things all at once. And this is, as we get into further along in our journey, is we get into libraries like NumPy. NumPy is this amazing Python library that basically got in and, and, customize the way Python handles arrays so that you can do matrix math and matrix linear algebra operations uh, more easily, uh, among other things. Um, and, and one of the reasons why NumPy works as well as it does is it doesn't rely on Python's list, which is handy for a lot of things. It relies on array, contiguous memory, doing operations all at once through apply, those sorts of things. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, wow, we, we just talked ourselves around a lot of stuff that really quick. <laughs> Sorry, you know what, let's, let's, let's go through the rest of this because I think also going back over this multiple times, I mean, I find even now, you know, multiple years into my Python journey, I'll come back to list and we think, oh, well, this is so basic, but there's just, this is kind of amazing. It's kind of amazing. The arrays underneath are amazing. And this is an amazing and very flexible data structure. So it's worth kind of circling around it. Yes. Like one of the things that I think is really spiffy is the ability to have multiple, um, you can, within a list, you can have lists. <laughs> lists yeah. of things inside <laughs> of it. So here's like sort of that example of where you have a list of uh, words and then you have a list of numbers here, all within this huge list called spam really likes using that as a variable name. Um, <laughs> um, but what's interesting was this note, remembering the index, seeing how the index addressing here is a little bit different when you have multiple lists. That first one is referencing, oh, hopefully I remember this right. It's referencing which list we're referring to. So um, in this case, you have one, two lists, so that zero refers to the first one. So we're referring to this list here of cat and bat. And then this one is the first, is the, um, the item at position one of this list, which is index zero, index one. So we're talking about bat in this case. So once again, that harkens back to array-like concepts. Um, but, but what's nice about this is this is multidimensional and you wouldn't want to go too far down the crazy pants path, but each of the lists that's in spam could itself be a list of lists. And uh, because they are all pointing uh, to data instead of containing data, uh, it's easier to manipulate that. It's easier to manipulate a list of lists of lists than arrays. Uh, at some level, but uh, you know, all those references slow you down. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> and we'll definitely, we'll definitely see that in the, the the practice project at the end. We can actually see how that plays um, plays out using the multi-dimensional um, concept. Um, this was something that was new to me. 
the, the using negative indexes um, to reference essentially the last index in the list. Um, so I'm used to going, if, you, if you're working your way from left to right, zero, one, two, three, but if you're trying to say, hey, get me the last thing in the list, then you actually start using negative to work your way backwards. And it's not, instead of, you know, negative zero, since that's not a thing, it starts with negative one, negative two, negative three, and you can work your way in the opposite direction if you want to. I do have a question. Go for it. About, it's um, under getting individual values in a list with indexes. You'd have to scroll up. up. Going up. Where it says, okay, and scroll down a little bit. Yes, ma'am. Down more, more, <laughs> more. Let's see. Uh, oh, it, it was before negative. Uh, what it says is cat, bat, rat, elephant, and then there's a three in the brackets mm -hmm. right there. How did they get? Oh, yeah. Uh, move your arrow down just a little bit. Yes, ma'am. Right there. Cat, bat, rat, elephant, and a three in the brackets. Now, I thought cat would be zero, bat's one, rat is two, elephant is three. Okay. Elephant is three. Elephant is three. Zero, one, two, three. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that it takes, it takes a while. And some of the best bugs I've ever written are because my brain refuses to truly understand that indexes start at zero. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah. so are, are they just referencing the um, uh, index using the entire uh, list instead of the list name? Is that what they've done there? Yes. And that is, that is a great observation. Uh, you can get away with that if you use the list literal although you really won't see that in a whole lot of code. Yeah, I was going to say, why would you do that? I don't think, I don't think that's, that is used at all that much. So. Oh, he's just sort of demonstrating that you can do that, that you could reference It's that. possible, but as you can see right there, it's kind of hard to scan. Like, you know, your brain kind of, your eyes bounce back and forth, so. Yes, I did that too whenever I was going through the chapter. <laughs> yeah, kind of frowned on, I guess I would say. It's better to, to, to name it an alias. Anyway. Any other comments about this section? Negative indexes. So I have a little graphic that I used for one of the webinars that I did uh, that I can post later. Uh, it may not be helpful to people, but it has, it's a little, it's a little graphic about being able to go forwards and backwards in a list with positive and negative indexes. Ooh, um, yes, please. Yeah, so I'll, I'll do that in a bit. <clears throat> That'd be awesome. Oh, and that reminds me, um, we have a GitHub. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have a GitHub now where we're putting all of our code for these conversations um, or in our notes and things like that. So got to make sure we mention that at the end again. Um, okay. So getting into sublists or basically slicing into that entire um, um, list that we just created. So here is sort of an example of a sublist or a, a slice, excuse me. Um, so here we have an example of a list being assigned to a variable. Um, and you have zero, one, two, three are your indexes. Um, so what you're seeing here being said is um, basically just return everything starting at index zero, but, but everything before index four. So it does not include that last number. Um, so that was something that was interesting for me to have to wrap my head around. There's an additional interesting thing that I don't think he goes into too much here, which is the interpreter is going to assume, unless you tell it something else, the interpreter will assume that you start at zero. So the zero for the start isn't needed. And um, the four, the end index is only needed if um, you 
you know, it, 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 you need to, to go to the end. But in that particular case, that first example, essentially he's asking for the entire list. And so you could just put a colon in those brackets and Python's gonna assume the start of zero and it's going to just return you back basically a copy of the list. So that those, those are two little quirks basically. But yeah, I, I see people use zero, it's totally fine. It's not gonna toss an error, but the interpreter will also put that zero in for you. So you don't need to put it in anyway. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. The, or the, that's a good, why I guess I highlighted while you were talking that next one. Yeah. That's an example of what you're saying, right? Yeah. Is you don't have to start with the zero. You can just sort of leave it out. Yeah. Um, some people like to put it in for clarity. Uh, and, and it is a nice reminder to you to like, look, I'm starting at zero and I'm ending at three, you know, in that mm -hmm. case. But yeah, but you don't have to. <clears throat> um, any other comments about that section? I really want to emphasize because um, I, I have made this mistake and yep. I, I think other people have. When you use this slice, uh, conceptually, it's good to think of it as a subsection of the list, but in reality, what Python is doing is it is making a copy. You are making a copy, so it returns you a copy it is not returning you, it's not mutating, it's not changing your original list. So slicing copy references. So, um, mm -hmm. um, I can ask after you finish speaking, sorry. Oh, no, 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 I'm done, please go. Um, so I was gonna say, so you could set um, a, the slice to a variable, right? Can mm -hmm. you, okay, all right. No, exactly, and that's, that's, a great way to think about it because that, you know, it, 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 it can be easier uh, in context to do that than to call dot copy. Uh, you just take a slice and you say, you know, my, ha my half of the list equals, you know, slice, blood, uh, you know, whatever. And it'll copy it for you. So. <clears throat> okay. Then now I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have anything for this section? Um, this section uh, was regarding about list links. So if you ever need to know how many items you essentially have in your list, you can just use that link um, function that we're used to from a previous conversation or a previous chapter, um, and it will return the number of items in that list. Now, getting into changing those values. Um, you can change values in the list by sort of combining the things that we learned before between assignment and um, also the indexes. So here's an example of the list originally said cat, bat, rat, elephants. But in this particular case, we're going to reference index one and change that bat into a string aardvark, but through the assignment. Um, and you can also do that between lists as well, between these items as well. So, and this is the, um, correct me if I'm, no, I was trying to figure out if this for changing of values is regard, is that mutation concept at all, but it's not quite, right? That's something a little bit different. Uh, no, this actually is, so if you do an assignment here, notice, right, when you ask for spam again, um, I mean, ugh, technically speaking, it's both. So what happens here is spam is a list that has pointers to cat, bat, rat, and elephant. When you say spam at one is equal to aardvark, it's not erasing bat, it's pointing bot one to aardvark. But effectively, unless you've, you know, referenced bat somewhere else, eventually bat's gonna get cleaned up. So functionally here, you have changed your, your bag of references. You've changed the list. So you have mutated the list. Okay. Um, but, you know, underneath the covers, because lists point to data, uh, you aren't, it, it's not the same, like 
it's not the same as erasing that. Like you could go and erase that from memory, uh, which would also would, which would get rid of that and mutate your list. So, um, so yes, you are here. You're changing. You're changing the contents of slot one, basically. Um, so unless you copy this list and change it, uh, you you know you've 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 just changed your original at this point. So. But if you if you were to copy the list and change um, index one to um, from bat to aardvark, would would not your original list also change or no? No, if you copy the list, uh, uh, not make through assignments, but if you copy the list. Like, you know, spam underscore two is equal to spam dot copy. Okay. Then when you, when you change spam underscore two, you leave spam alone. Okay. Thank you. Um, where you run into a problem uh, is if you say spam, uh, spam underscore two equal to spam. Mm. So happens and I do this too. You, you mentally you think you've made a copy there you haven't made a copy okay and that yeah, that's really trouble there and not had not had clarity on why I, it wasn't working or why i wasn't getting the result that i thought i should be getting mm. yeah yeah Thanks. it can be sneaky <laughs> um that's probably why the chapter was so long. There's so many little, so many little things to try to keep track of. Um, I'm gonna move into concatenation and replication unless anyone has any other questions. Um, so in this section, this was just being able to um, append. I like to think of concatenation as appending two lists together. So here's an example, one, two, three was separated from ABC, but then it becomes one list when you put that plus sign in between it. Um, and then you also have the multiplication sign to replicate. So you multiply that times three, and then all of a sudden you have XYZ written three times with inside that list. And that was, that's a similar concept to our last chapter that we were doing um, with just strings, um, yeah. in concatenation replication. So it can do the exact same thing. Yay. Mm -hmm. I have a question there. Yeah. Um, so what if I want to add the ABC in a different position apart from just the end? Like if you want to put it between two and three, for example, how would you do that? Would that be the append? No, 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 no. Not the append, the insert. We would need to use the insert function there. Yeah, you would need to use the insert. Um, and, and there's a bunch of, uh, like, you could also do a slice assignment, although that's weird. Um, so insert would probably be your best bet where you, you basically took, you know, each of the items in the positions in your ABC list and you did an insert at, you know, position two in the one, two, three list. And it's an insert. We're going to go over insert, um, a little bit later in this chapter. So yeah. we'll, we'll hit it. Um, okay. Removing values from lists and the delete statement. Um, so this is how you sort of just sort of take things away. Once again, referencing that index, but then we throw the keyword del that we learned before right in front of it. And you can essentially take out rat, zero, one, two, rat disappears in this new list because we deleted it with that del keyword. Um, so pretty straightforward on that respect. Any questions about removing? There's an analogous function that I don't think he goes over in this chapter. The will nuke a value, but if what you want is to remove the, the value from the list, but you also want it back, like you're going to do something with it, but you want to pull it off the list, then you can use pop. And pop will, will basically delete it from the list, but it'll also hand the value to you to do something if you need to. Like if I need to put uh, you know, rat in a sentence, I can pop it and put it in a sentence and remove it from the list in the same operation. And that means that you'd be able to assign that pop value to a, a, a variable, right? Uh-huh. Yes. Smart woman. Yes, you can. Well, no, you know, I'm asking these questions because there are times when I'm trying to do these things and I feel like I've done them before and then all of a sudden it's not, some, something's not working correctly and I, I can't figure out <laughs> Why? I'm like, but I thought I could do that. 
Okay. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just making sure that what I'm thinking I can do, I can actually do. Yeah, yeah. So you can basically make a new label for it, right? In some sense, a new placeholder. And you say, my pet equals spam.pop2, which is rat. And you now have a new pet rat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Can we use the uh, pop? after in the beginning itself or is it in the end which we have to use uh you know what uh, uh, that's a great question and i would have to go look at the docs because i don't tend to use pop very often so you know what let me pull that up from the python 3 docs um, can we hold can we hold on to that yeah um, for, let's put that in the parking lot yeah put that in the parking lot let's add it to slack um, okay so that we can we can hit that yeah um, yeah but I, I just want to make sure we get through the rest of the stuff that was in here, just in case people have other questions too. Um, okay, so working with lists, um, this is just this whole section was sort of giving you reasons why we're learning all of this to begin with. Um, so in previously from our previous chapters, we've gotten used to doing assignments of um, strings or values to individual variables. In fact, they even made us do a really long one in that last chapter um, where we had to do this one by one by one. But now that we have this concept of a list, we don't have to write out literally six different variables. We can actually put it inside of this while loop that we learned how to use um, in the previous chapter and add it slowly to this cat names um, list that we've declared and defined and slowly add it using that concatenation symbol that we've just now um, taken advantage of during this chapter. So this is a really good exercise. If you have not um, yet reviewed chapter four, um, you can come in here and just try all my cats one and then all my cats two to sort of see the difference between writing out all the variables yourself or the advantage of actually using a list um, and sort of the power of that. So this is probably the very first um, piece of code that was really helpful to bring it all together. Um, so if anyone was working through this particular section, did you have any comments or questions that you thought was interesting in here? No, pretty straightforward. Taking that silence as a yes. <laughs> okay, then we're gonna move into uh, for loops and lists. Oh, and I'm not sure if y'all have noticed um, these little YouTube symbols keep popping up. He does do videos on all of these sections. Um, so if you're not a reader, you'd rather watch someone do it. Um, check out these videos at each of the tops of the section so that you can sort of see it in action as well. Yeah, um, he's a really, he's a real, really cheerful guy. I, I actually really like his videos and I tend not to be a video person, but he, he does some good videos, so. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> um, the, no, this was just about using loops with lists. Like, I, it's almost like once you finally learn that lists are a thing, you, you can't get away with, um, without knowing how to use a loop with the list. That's basically how you actually start working through some things. Um, so it starts off by sort of reminding you how to use a for loop inside of Python, um, where you have this variable i for this range and it's going up on, um, from zero to three. And it's gonna print um, this particular variable, zero, one, two, three. Now, um, so I have to stop for just a second. I, I, I just am squirming and I apologize. This has nothing to do with you um, and probably more to do with me than anything else. So this little piece of code for I in range four print I actually violates PEP8. Um, Wait, what's PEP8? What's PEP8? PEP8 is a Python uh, uh, language proposal, basically. That you can find them all posted in a in the Slack channel a little bit later, but it's basically the Python's community Python community's way. Python is an open source language. It's run by a not for profit foundation, and it, the PEPs are the way the community proposes changes to the Python programming language, and 
develops community standards around how you're supposed to use Python and write Python, basically. So PEP8, which is an early one, they're, they're all in order, and you can actually go to the Python Foundation website and look up each one of these uh, and the history of them and all of the discussion around them. If you join the Python Software Foundation, you can become a voting member and vote on whether or not those proposals get adopted by the community, which is very cool. That is so that's the whole kind of Python ecosystem. PEP8 is a set of, of rules, like general guidelines of like what good Python code looks like. And in it, they talk about not using single letter variable names in most situations because it's not clear what the variable refers to. First. Ah, yes. And then secondly, lowercase i and lowercase l are particularly bad because in a lot of fonts and with a lot of levels of vision, they can be confused for numbers. And so in general, if, if, if this, this book doesn't follow that standard and should, but in general, you should try to use just about anything else but a lowercase i or a lowercase l. And you really should, like I've gotten in the habit of, of using the word index or number and being very explicit. Um, this is my personal, that, that's my personal thing, but, but mostly you really should strive to, to make clear with your use of variable names kind of what you're doing. Totally um, and, yeah. So, okay, now and I'll stop. And, then, and just to be clear, that's not really, um, it, it's in PEP8 specifically for Python, but that sounds like a, just a good coding practice in general. Um, it is for a lot of languages now. When you program in C and C++ for, for multiple different reasons, uh, a, a lot of them being because of when those languages were developed, and, and how they were compiled and, and, and those sorts of things, uh, you see the convention of having single letter variable names because they take up less space. But in the modern age, in, in JavaScript, in Ruby, in Python, in Java, uh, we don't have like an 80 character constriction usually. Uh, and we have code editors that will allow us to be verbose for clarity. And so the tendency is to, to be verbose and not to use single letter uh, variables, but you'll see it in Fortran. You'll see it in um, I've seen it in Haskell, and I I definitely seen it in Perl and in C and C plus mm plus. -hmm. So. I think that's where I learned it was in C and C plus plus. But um, so glad you mentioned that, and you even got a kudos um, from John on the chat. She really appreciated that. <laughs> cool. All right. So what we'll, we'll go. Okay. Now we we can keep going. But this yeah, the looping stuff is very cool. I, I, yeah. This, it, this is, this is, I think, one of the very first um, powerful, what? I need to put in my battery. Um, this is one of the very first powerful examples that you see of them using it. Um, you define like a list of supplies, assign it to a particular variable. And then here, based on that length of supplies, you go through your for loop and um, referencing that I, you, you're slowly increasing your index for whatever's at index zero that supply I like you to print out. So it ends up saying index zero, your supplies are pins. Index one, your supplies are staplers as it slowly moves its way through that list. So this is another really good one, I think, to, to put your eyes on or try coding yourself if you're still getting used to using for loops along lists. Um, any questions about this section before we jump into in and not? Operators? Um, so here in the in and not, does anyone remember what it was used for? Or anyone want to take a guess? Oh, I thought I was speaking and I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why no one, why is she still talking? <laughs> And I didn't click. Okay, so the in is for for going and check to see if the value is in there in the list, and it right. will return true if it's in there. Mm -hmm. And the not is to see if it's not in there. Yeah, so that's like a, a really good way of just comparing. Does is, does this variable exist? I mean, excuse me. Does this value exist? Value. In this list. Yes. Yeah. 
And so it's just sort of like an evaluation, sort of similar to when you're doing using the uh, comparison operators. We just use a, a word instead. Well, and the word, what's nice about the word. So this is where um, if you've taken C or C++ or Java or even JavaScript, right? A lot of time you might be taught to through the list to look for what you need or to use a find method. But in, uh, as a quick check, if you don't need the value back, is faster. So Ooh. that's the other thing is that underneath the covers they've made in and not in algorithmically more efficient than other methods. So that's another reason why you'd want to use them. You know, if you don't need the value, if you need the value, then you have to go looking for it. But yeah, if you just need to check if it's in there, then this is really fast. Oh, that's cool. That's really good to know. Um, okay, then moving into multiple assignments. Any other questions before I hit into this? Um, so this was just a way, I think earlier we, we, we saw how to assign like one value at a particular time in the list. This just shows you that you can do more than one using commas. <laughs> so you can say um, these are the, uh, wait, hold on. My brain is just like blinking right now. Oh, here we go. It's these three variables. You have these three variables, size, color, and disposition, and immediately it's going to go to this list and map out one for one. Um, the very first item in the list maps to the first variable that you um, declared in this statement. Now, um, you just have to be careful when you're using this because it's a one-to-one -one match. If you don't actually have a one-to-one -one match, it's going to throw an error. Um, at the bottom. I, I love too that, uh, and, and I have triggered this kind of error more often than I'd like to admit. I love how very pointed Python is. Need more than three values to unpack. And you will also see an alternate one of too many values to unpack. <laughs> 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 like, oh no, dude, I can't deal with this, sorry. <laughs> that is pretty nice. Like when I was first learning how to program, like. The, er the error just didn't, was not helpful at all. And I have found these errors to be a lot more helpful to yep. point out things. So this one was, you're right, very much more specific than I normally see. So for Python, it just won't assign those variables. It's, it's, not, won't, it's not like it will assign up until what's there and then leave the last one unassigned if it doesn't have anything to match it to. It just, does, it just won't execute this code at all. Exactly, which is exactly what you want. Because I think there are some languages I believe that would actually. Maybe I'm wrong. No, I, I I think you're not wrong. I am not. I'm spacing right now on this specific example in JavaScript, but yeah. I, I think JavaScript might try to quote help you, which may not be helpful in that situation. So, for instance, if you have an array that's three items and you have four variables, right. JavaScript will assign the last one undefined. Right, okay, thank you. Yeah, not helpful, but yeah. This, no, this, I mean, JavaScript not being helpful, but yeah, this Python will be like, hey, wait a minute. Like, no, there's three things in the box. Like, you need to have three things, you know, you need, you need to have three containers for me to put these things in or I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up, Lisa. I didn't consider that. That's a good thing to keep in mind. Um, okay, swap. I, I want to call out the swap really quick. Yeah. You will see this a lot if you go on and you study algorithms. This is a uh, an infamous kind of thing that gets used in like sorting algorithms and other things where you say a comma b equal b. Uh, so I just want to call that out quickly. Say that last bit again, you'll see it a lot in algorithms because what? Uh, for sorting algorithms. Okay. So when you, when you do something like um, a merge sort or, or another type of sort, like in the it kind of the, the you know, algorithms that you, you study for those patterns, you will see that convention a lot where you, you get a and B on the left hand side and then you want to swap A's value and B's value and you'll see the A comma B equal B comma A 
to shift the positions of something, right, that you're sorting. And so I just wanted to call that out. Um, it's easy to pass over that. And then at least when I come back to it later, I'm like, what? <laughs> what is that doing? Uh, and it's that you're swapping it. Um, and Python will allow you to do that. C will not allow you to do this. You have to do like an intermediary assignment to like you assign A to C and then, and then swap them. Python will let you do it in like this. So, okay. <laughs> cool. I sort of wish like I can put like little annotations as we go along um, and say like, this is really fast or this is great for algorithms and sorting. I just, I got to figure out how to do that for this next time. Yeah, yeah. There, there might be like little, a little sticky program we can use or something. We can, we can yeah, use, yeah. And then we can like print it and then just sort of save it off to the side in addition to the recording when we finally get those done, um, so that people can read and just go back and. Anywho, moving on. <laughs> um, augmented assignment operators. Wow, this is a long chapter. Um. Okay, augmented assignment operators. What's this all about? Oh, this is just basically shortcut. I, I think of them as like shortcuts in my head. So whenever you're trying to um, add a number back to the variable that you're already using, um, you can basically, instead of having to repeat the word spam twice, you just write spam once and then you use this plus equals. And I think that's what we actually talked about in the, one of the previous meetings was the sort of like a shortcut of, of writing that. And there's a whole table dedicated to, you can do it with all of the basic mathematical operators you're used to. I'm so glad that he put a table in there because I think a lot of people, plus equals make sense, minus equals sort of makes sense, but then you get into like multiplication, division, and modulus, and you're like, mm? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. That's 100% true. Because like, when he showed the rest, I'm like, I didn't realize that was possible. But... <laughs> So nice, it's here. Okay, and awesome. Options. Yes. Mm. Okay, I'm about to jump into methods. Any other questions about what we've gone over so far? Okay, so this is what we're going to learn about insert, um, as well as index, append, remove, and sort. So all sorts of fun little methods going on here. Um, this first method, so you take the the, the name of the list and then you apply the method at the end so it's just a, a period followed by the name of the method in this case it's index it tells you the location of this value within the list um, if and only if it exists um, so that's which how you basically use the index method and now this gets to a question that we had earlier about how do I add something into the list um, you can use the method append. This one is always going to put the word, the value at the end of the list, while insert is how you can get it into the middle of the list or at a very specific position. Uh, and there's also an extend method, but it's probably easier to leave that for, I shouldn't have said anything. Append will tack it onto the end of the list extend will do this interesting thing where if you want to marry two lists together uh, and you don't want it to be a list inside your list, you can use extend and extend will unpack the list and put each item at the end of the list instead of putting the whole list as an item, right? If that makes any sense. Is the concept though the same as, wait, is so, it not the same as concatenation? Uh, yeah, in some sense, it's the same as concatenation. It's just, a, it's a method instead of a, instead of using the plus sign. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it's, it, it's, yeah, it's essentially doing the same thing. It's going through and unpacking it and adding the individual items to the list rather than the list itself as an item, as a single item. Yeah. So, so just mm -hmm. so you know, I have a very nice parking lot going on over here, Bethany. Um, and <laughs> Just made that list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can do a little. I, you know, I'm happy to do a little write up on the. You know, I'll, I'll, it, or, or we can put a code snippet in. The, yeah. The functional difference between append, extend. You know, maybe little snippets on all of these methods. Little code yeah. examples. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Right. Okay. Before, did someone have something? 
another question or anything about these four functions? Methods, excuse me. Okay, removing values from the list. That's our remove method. Um, similar concept as delete, right? Yeah, as delete. delete huh? Yeah, thank you. I just cannot get the words. Um, <laughs> it's but it's as it's applied directly to that variable. So before it was del that it was placed before the um, it was del space spam and then you refer to a very specific index. This might be something you yes. want to do because you don't know the index, you just know the value. Um, and so it will do the work of finding that particular value for you. So that's remove. And then we got our nice little sort here, which is fun. So if you want to put things, you have a list and you want to actually put it in alphabetical order, for example, these guys here, um, you can press sort and it goes into alphabetical order. Just rearranges that list accordingly. And if you want, if you need to go in the opposite direction, applying this particular argument, reverse equals true, will go in reverse order as well. So Lisa Adams is uh, asking in chat if you can uh, click to let her in on her phone. I guess she had to rejoin you through her phone yeah. and she's in the lobby. No worries. Sorry about that. Lisa, you back with us? Yes, I am. Something happened with my uh, audio. Um, before we move on from sort, I need to alert uh, people to what I think is a, a very dangerous confusion. Ooh. So there is actually two methods around sort. One is called sort, and the other is called sorted with an ED on it. And uh, this has bitten me a lot and bites a lot of uh, Python programmers when they start. Sort changes your list, right? It reorders your list. So it mutates your list. Um, sorted does the same action, but on a copy. And so it is much safer to use sorted because sorted, you know, will hand you back a copy. And so then you don't have to worry about anybody else who relies on your list having it reordered out from underneath them. Ooh. So sort mutates in place. And there's a note, I'll, I'll post this also in the Slack channel. There's a note in the documentation about this. Sort mutates the list in place. Sort TED gives you a copy. And uh, there's a strong favoring for sorted over sort uh, because of that. I'm glad you mentioned that because I was wondering about that. It felt a little dangerous when I was reading this. I'm like, well, but what if? Yeah. <laughs> um, gotcha. <laughs> there's actually a problem on exorcism. Uh, it's the third problem on the Python track uh, called high scores. And high scores kind of sets up uh, programmers who are Python with this exact thing where, uh, you know, it's really tempting to use sort, but if you do, you, um, you end up mutating your list and then you've got a problem. So um, I, can, I can post that, uh, it's a good practice problem, I can post that problem for us if we wanna work through it later. Okay, and this is what she's referring to guys when she says exorcism. I, I just wanted to show it to you real quick because every time I hear it, I do not think of this website as my, my go-to. I hear something else in my head. So um, this is just a really nice coding website to get your practice in and mentor with others. Um, I'll definitely post that in the Slack when we're done. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's sorting. Any questions about sorting? Um, here is the next program. That's a really good one. If you want to just sort of jump around and not necessarily read, you just want to get your hands on something. Um, here's another really good one to just uh, code yourself called the Magic 8-Ball. It's actually a repeat of Chapter 3. Um, however, it makes you use a list in order to do it. Um, instead of having to apply all of these in individual variables and print them all out um, randomly. So this is a very good um, exercise to try to do. So this whole section, it's really not anything except practicing um, and using the print function as well as the random function 
and the link functions as well to, to uh, print out these statements randomly, like an eight ball, a magic eight ball. Um, it goes into a little bit of information about indentation here. So just be oh, Yeah, I do love that. I'm definitely in love with that because the indentation for me is an issue. But whenever you want a list, I think it's, it's kind of nice the way that you can order it one next to each other. Like whenever, like, like if you compare it when, whenever you do SQL queries and then you want to organize column by column, same thing. So whenever someone looks at the problem, it's, it's really more easy. Yes, yes, definitely. So essentially, if you didn't catch what uh, Liliana was saying, you, you are allowed to be flexible with this indentation here when you're in the middle of the list so that this is um, much easier to read. Um, this particular example is a little off the rails. However, if you're showing you, <laughs> you can, you can do it um, within a list, add that extra indentation. But probably- Yeah, actually not. him in the video, in the video, he does it like, organize how I say one and then the next one, the next one, the next one. So oh. these examples are great. But if you look at the video, yeah, he, he does it really organized. Cool. And that holds true in Python for all data structures. So you can do this same sort of indentation trick in a dictionary, which is really nice if you have a lot of data because you can line it up so that you can scan it easily. Um, and, and Python is to say, oh, well, I see an open curly brace. I'm going to wait for the closed curly brace. And what you do in between is, you know, none of my business, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you can line them up. So it's good. Mm -hmm. um, and here's an example of if you want to break a string up um, and do the alignment. It's a little different because it's, it's not a list per se. Um, but if you do the plus sign with the, the slash, then you, you're able to, to get that organization that you're looking for um, within the statement. Um, okay, moving into strings and tuples. Any questions before we jump into this? Because this is dif different in a way. Go for it. Okie doke. There we go. Um, let's see. I've already forgotten what I was doing here. Okay, strings, let's start off with strings. So here's an example of a string. And so this goes, I just love how things that we talk about like two sessions ago, Bethany, are like coming <laughs> back because you yeah. introduced the concept of iterables to us. And so now we can sort of see that in action that a string is something that you can move across. And so yeah. here's an example of a very simple string. And here you can, it, you can actually reference at index zero, the very first uh, letter that makes up this string, and it returns that. So you can move along it very similar to a list um, because a string is iterable, similar yeah. to a list. And so you and have that, I'm sorry, go on. No, 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 please go. Yeah. I, I was just saying you have the same concepts of the list, right? So you can reference it by index, you can go backwards, or you can do like a little slice of it. Yeah. And you can use in and not, all that fun stuff we just did with lists on strings. And I just have to share this. I'll share it again because it's one of my favorite tricks in Python. So a really, really classic interview question, uh, whiteboard interview question uh, used to be uh, for, for a lot of C and C++ and Java people was reverse a string or reverse an array. And, um, you know, without calling a method. Uh, and, uh, you know, that can be fairly challenged to do, challenging to do efficiently. But a Pythonista, kind of giggles at that because you can reverse that string by basically taking a reverse slice. <laughs> you don't have to write any more code than that. It's really lovely. So you basically do the string with the, you know, the, the, the index notation and colon, colon, minus one. And you say, hey, Python, and Python says, here you go, backwards. So anyway, it's, it, to me, it's a lovely trick. It's lovely that, you know, you can do that with a list and you could also do that with a string. You, you know just, what? I think you just made a nice homework assignment for us all. Um, so we can see if we can get that done and post it like in Slack or something. That would actually be pretty cool. Just like one little baby homework assignment. <laughs> <laughs> 
but but I love I love this trick too because you can do things like you know take take something like like this right where he's printing it vertically oh, or you yep. can you can shave you know the first letter off of something or you can recombine things like the first half of my name and the second half of your name and all of that sort of stuff so it's a lot of fun yeah that's really good this is once again more reasons why people love python so much <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to get into mutable and immutable data types. So um, in my head, I just have to always do the translation because these are not normal words for me, mutable, immutable. Mutable just means it can be changed, while immutable cannot be changed. <laughs> so, I, I, I have the same problem like you. It's, it's weird for me to translate those two words to, to that. I think I have to think of it like mutation. Like I have to say... Mutable means mutation, which is like changing something in some sort of way. So yeah. immutable must be the opposite of that. It's, we'll learn. We'll, yeah. we'll get it to click real quick. Well, it, as we all know, my brain doesn't really kind of work normally, but I use a picture as a mnemonic for these. So mutable, I think of a lump of clay, and immutable, I think of a um, like a square plastic box. So like something I can like malleable, right? I I, I kind of map mutable to malleable uh, and or, or squishable and immutable to like hard and, and not malleable. Um, and that helps me sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. But. <laughs> sometimes it just is like, nah, not today. Yeah, not today. <laughs> I'm on vacation. <laughs> um, okay, so lists are mutable. Um, we can change them. We can, and I think, I think the key of, of that is like we can change them in place, I guess, um, which is something that I think I've heard you say, Bethany, a little bit today. Mm -hmm. um, and so strings are something that you can change and slice and add and remove at will. Um, so for example, we have eggs, right? So we have a list called eggs. We are assigning the numbers one, two, three, and we can change those numbers with another assignment to four, five, six. Um, but right. but the strings, strings and tuples, that is not the case. So, so that, that would be the big difference. So like you said here, for eggs, not only can you assign one, two, three, but you can go back in and say eggs at one equals 16, and then it'll be one, 16, three, right? So Python lets you just reach inside there and change the reference. Uh, but if you try that with a string, uh, you're gonna get a very different result. So if you scroll back up one get the top paragraph, notice this error here, right? So name, name equals the string Sophie a cat. And then you say name at seven equals the, and Python says, no, it doesn't. <laughs> the object does not support item assignment. No, you can't. You have to make a new string. You have to say new name equal the string Sophie the cat instead of Sophie a cat. Right? Oh, thank you for bringing that out. I think I missed that, that portion that the um, lists are mutable, changeable, <laughs> but in this particular case, strings are not. Right, and, and it's very hard. I, it's very hard for me to remember that because strings are used so much in examples that you kind of get used to to them appearing to change, and then right. you run into an error like this where you cannot reach in and you cannot a to the. You have to make a new string, right? You have to you have to copy that and make a new one. You can't you can't just change that letter inside that string. And I think in this example, I th what's um, I think the the hard part about this mutable unmutable concept is I I do this. It seems like I change it all the time when I do another assignment. But the key is doing an assignment is not actually changing it; it's overwriting it. Yeah, yeah. So it, if it, we it, wanted to change this to Sophie the cat, we would actually have to re reassign name equals Sophie V cat. We can't just take this apart into little pieces. Right, and so underneath the covers, what you've actually done there, and this is something that can get you into trouble or not get you into trouble in Python. 
Uh, Python is passed by object. So when you say name equals Sophie a cat, Sophie a cat is in memory and name is a label that points to Sophie a cat in memory. When you then turn around and say name equal Sophie the cat, what happens is Sophie a cat stays in memory. Sophie the cat is created in a new space of memory and the label points to the new data. The old data is still in memory until it is cleaned up and the label points to a new value. So you're essentially, right, in some sense, it's a brand new string. And if you wanted to do something where you say, you know, uh, name equals Sophie the cat by copying and then changing the string, you can. But a string and its place in memory is a string in its place in memory. And so if you want to change what it is, you, you essentially create a brand new one. And that's, that's, you know, that's where he gets into, and we might want to take a little bit of a break with this and, and, and do some of this next week, but this is where all that box thing comes in about like the pointers and what's in the box and yeah. Yeah, that's, that's where it gets really fun. Um, yeah, I just checked the time and I realized I totally blew up, blew the time I was hoping to do here. Um, so I'm going to uh, keep on going on this one, but make a note to come back and provide a little bit more detail on this pointer concept. Yeah, and it might be something that we just want to parking lot and revisit. It took yeah. me, I think it takes most people, I would say, a while to internalize, right? It's one thing to talk about this, but it takes a while to really internalize what's happening here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's worth just kind of gradually revisiting it because it kind of doesn't, like you don't have to know that to use this stuff effectively, so. Right, or at least that initially um, yeah. for this learning everything. Um, okay, so a tuple. A tuple is similar to a list, however, it is immutable. Um, and so it is declared with, um, instead of square brackets, it's um, in parentheses. Um, but you can still reference it very similar to the way that you do with lists. So there are some concepts that are extremely similar. But you can't come in and reassign. Reassign. Right, because it's not mutable, so you can't sort a tuple. That's and right. Not, yeah, you can't, and you can't like reassign things in there. Oh um, man, this is gonna get me. This is gonna get me. Um, oh, that's gotten me. I I will not <laughs> tell you how many times that's gotten me. That's gotten me a lot. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna really enjoy this ability to change a tuple into a list concept right here. Of converting yep. the text because <laughs> it's like I right? to deal with you. Turn it into a list so I can work with it. Exactly. Through you, you will be sorted. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. So I'm trying to think. The reason why I'm thinking. Tell me, guys, if this is what you want to do or not want to do. Um, I don't know. I can't remember how much of this last bit really impacts the um, last few questions and the practice projects that we have. I don't think it, it impacts it too terribly much. Um, so I did want to hit on the, the questions and the practice since we're definitely over time and so people might need to go. If you don't mind, you can maybe hold on to this, the rest of the tuple discussion and the copy decopy for later. Does anyone have a problem with that? Nope. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna move straight on down into these questions to do a quick review. That way, if anyone wants to show code and um, us walk through it, we have some time to do that. Okay, so what are we staring at right here? What is this? A list. A list. List. Empty list. Oh, if wait. You want to, if you want to be funny, you just say that's brackets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is true. We it's a little square. We're staring at a little square. <laughs> yeah. You have to laugh, right, about it. Definitely. <laughs> this is a list, and an, and I think someone specifically said an empty list. So there's nothing in it. Similar to like how well, we can do empty strings. Same concept. 
So yeah, we got our list. Um, next question. How would you assign the value hello as the third value in a list stored in a variable name spam? Enough with the spam already. <laughs> Say again? I said enough with the spam already. I know I'm really over it. <laughs> totally over it. Okay, so does someone have an idea for this one? I think you put spam and two in the bracket equals hello and put the quote around the, the hello. I love Is it. The insert function which we use there? Ooh, um, that is a really good question. So are we replacing? Is that what he means here by assign or are well, we? That would be replacing, yeah. yeah you what? I think this is a replace. I'm sorry, Liliana. Yeah, this is a replace, yeah. So with the replace, we're doing essentially the assignment value. Yes. Instead of insert. Insert would push everything to the side. We're not trying to push. We're trying to change the six into hello. Does that make sense? Okay, so I think Lisa said what was the answer. Yes, I agree. Sam, two is, two is in the bracket. Yep. Hello. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Guys, I'm going to change my screen just a little bit here. So bear with me. Okay. So what we just said was, can y'all still see my screen okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's what we just said, I believe. Spam and two. Okay. And then equal in the body, yeah. Oh, details, details. Yep, totally right. I just, I just got lazy there. Okay. okay, next question. Um, so for this next question, we're going to say that the spam contains this list of A, B, C, and D. What does, ooh, this is fun. What does spam int, int of uh, three times two, um, can't remember the formal term for this division, floor division by 11 evaluate to? This one was tricky. It was. Now, does anyone want to take a stab at helping us get to the answer? Well, I know the answer is eight, but I don't understand how we got there. Um, so inside to outside, just like any math equation would be my first hint. Agreed. And I don't think it was eight. Oh. It might be three. Wait. Okay. You will start with three by two, right? Yeah. So th let's start here. So if we go all the way inside and we have this string, we have a string times two. What does string times two do? Does that mean 33, the string? Yes. Remember, that's replicate. So that mm -hmm. becomes a, thir a 33 as a string. So now we have a 33 inside of these parentheses. So what does int of a string do? It turns that yeah, string into an integer. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So then we have the number, the integer 33. 33, um, so this part would be 33. Floor division with 11. Three. And then we just turn that into, um, oops, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Um, then we just apply the, the, what's it called, the integer on that just to make sure it's the number three. Yeah. So we get T, right? The spam of three, A, B, C, three. yes. Three. No, D, zero, one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. C. So. So it was spam of three, but remembering we have to count zero, one. Oh, one, the spam is actually two. the first question. It's the second three. question, which is yeah. two, four, six, eight. Yeah. yeah, this one is for these three questions. Yeah. OK. Which is one reason why you shouldn't reuse variable names, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Because it confuses yourself and other people. <laughs> it confuses me. It confused me this the first time I look at. Uh, yeah. Um. Okay. So next question: What does spam minus one evaluate to? D. Okay. 
D because minus one comes from the end. So it's basically the last thing in the list. Yes. What does spam of two or spam of uh, colon to a value do? B. A comma B. A, B. A and B, you have to include this zero, which is A. Right. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. It just, I think for some people, it's better to have the zero because you don't see it there the first yeah, time. Kind of, yeah, I was like, what the heck? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> It's just to get used to. Okay, so then let's do these. Did I do that? Yeah, let's do these next three questions. Okay, bacon contains a list 3.14 and a couple of other things. What does bacon index of cats evaluate to? One. 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 Three. Three. No. We're gonna say. Well, so we have cat here because you're trying to say the index. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I didn't see the first cat. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe that index goes, it returns you the, the first one it comes across. Yeah, I didn't see the first one. Thank you. What does bacon.append99 make bacon look like? Just adds 99 onto the end of that list. Correct. So you'll see a comma and then 99 at the end. Mm -hmm. What does bacon.remove cat make the list look like? It removes the first cat. So this one, gone. Next. Mm -hmm. But then at this yeah. point, if we did this, then it would also still have 99 at the end, technically, right? Technically. So would, yes, yeah, technically, okay. yeah. Good call, good call. Yeah, if you did it in order, yep. Okay, what are the operators for list concatenation and list replication? Concatenation is plus. Yes. Replication is the multiply, mm -hmm. multiply asterisk. Perfect. Um, what's the difference between append and insert? Append, append will, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Append that to the end and insert, you can specify the position. Exactly right. Perfect. Uh, what are the two ways to remove values from a list? Delete, oh no, D-E-L and remove. Yes. And then remembering the difference is remove, you have to specify the specific thing that you're trying to remove. While delete, um, your specific, I mean, let me say that again. Remove, you're specifying the value. Delete, you're specifying the location. Um, name a few ways the list values are similar to string values. You can use the len len function for both. Yes. The length. You can. That is true. What else we got? Immutable. Mm. Can position. No. No. <laughs> list is list is mutable. String is immutable. So the, that is a difference between the two. Okay. You can concatenate and replicate both. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. Yeah. What I about said, what about pulling out pulling out stuff? Can you pull out stuff from both of them? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you can uh, index. Yeah. Um, you can access can index. Um, elements by index for both of them. Yeah. You cool. can sort. You can sort for both. Um, you can sort for list. I don't know. I don't think oh. you can sort for string. Yeah, you can sort for string. Oh, okay. But but we did. The, the, he didn't go over that in the chapter. But yes, you can. Um, you well. Strings are not mutable again, so you'll end up with a copy. You can call sorted, not sort, but you can call sorted on a string. Sort. And you can use in and not in on both the string and the list, right? Like if yeah. for a string, if you're looking for just a letter, right? Yeah. Can we do that? Yeah. You can slice, slice. You can do for loops in and not in operations, which you just said. On a roll, man. Love it, Lisa. 
Okay, so these last few questions I'm going to hold off because we didn't really go over this part. Um, so who, we have two practice projects at the bottom. One was about comma code. Um, so this was basically, you base, you give the, you, you provide a list, apples, comma, bananas, comma, tofu, comma, cats, but instead your output would be a string, one string, not a list, but a string that had all of that to put together. That was the first project. Um, would anyone like to go over this project? I did the first, but I didn't do the second one. That character picture grid. That one was tough. Um, does anyone want to share their screen for the, for the comma code if they didn't get it done? Um, and if not, then we can just share a screen of who did get it done. And we can just see what it looks like. I, I got it done. Uh, I don't know how you share the screen. Um, if you go, it could be at the top, it could be at the bottom, but um, similar, do you see, if you move your mouse maybe to the top, sort of like mine, I have like this bar. I'm going to uh, stop sharing. Share. Oh, I see. Okay. Exit full screen. Share. Share. Do you have that option? Share. Oh, yeah. Okay, and I will put put that somewhere. Here it is. Uh, this is in my notes. Did you want me to put it in the um, <clears throat> the Python doohickey? Um, what do you call it? GitHub. The GitHub. Yes. Um, no. Uh, do you want me to run oh, it? The Python tutor thing? Yeah. Or uh, no. Well, hold on. Can everyone see her screen? I was no. just going to say it, it's black for me. So yeah. Lisa, I don't oh. know if you have two screens. Um, but yeah, I don't, I can't see what you're sharing at the moment. Can you oh. maybe just need to make sure you're sharing the right thing? I don't know if you need to share okay. your desktop. Or maybe you can I, move it. Yeah. I will, I will press stop share share let's see desktop one share can you see that yes that's beautiful good job okay. here here is my code uh, do you want me to put it in the python thing or i can pull it up here oh you mean the python tutor yeah, if, yes. you, if you'd like to, we can do that, yeah. Python. Visualize Python. There we go. Okay. And now I will get back to my notes. That's not the right note. Let's see. Okay. I will put this here. Call function and copy. Like your use of comments. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. Paste. OK. Visualize execution. Forward. I'm defining my function. And there it is. Yay. OK. There's spam. Link. Index is four. And cats. There. Okay. Okay. So one thing is that on line eight, where you're doing the slice there, which is awesome, but the slice is returning a list. And so how would, might you, how might we change the code so that eight and nine are one line that is a string? Oh. Hmm. I'm not sure. When I was trying to put stuff together like that, I put that in the Slack channel. It would mm -hmm. not let me put stuff together the way I wanted it to. 
Yeah. So <laughs> could you repeat what you did on line nine on line eight? So on line eight, on nine, you did a okay. string and a plus sign, right? String and a plus, yes. Could you combine that? Yeah. The this same one? What, yeah. I, what I'm talking about, what I put in the Slack channel, when I tried to combine, I got an error, but you want me to put it right here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's my thought, maybe. Because it was saying you can't combine different. Oh, because he's trying to combine the string with with a list. Right. Uh, Python uh, won't let you do that because they're two different yes. types. Yes, it yeah, won't I'll let you do that. You, I'll let I'll let you see that. It yeah, it wouldn't let me combine a string and a does that mean we need to convert it? Yeah, so so we need to think, so think for a minute what, what happens here. So when, so you're using a slice. Right and here, Python yeah. is copying the list and giving you a list back. But there are other ways that you can get at those pieces, right, of your list. And so if, if what you want are the items and not, a list, what what would you do? I want the items, not the list. Yeah, what is the item that you're looking for? Right. Apples, bananas, and tofu. Mm -hmm. And so those they're are... Strings. They're strings. And they're strings, right? And so each one of them, apples is at index zero, bananas is at index one, and tofu is at index two. So you could try just asking for each of them, right? Yes. But it said it would have to work uh, regardless of the number of items in the list. So that's why I couldn't just tell it, give me one, two, and zero, one, and two, because um, I wouldn't know how many, maybe there's a three and a four and a five and a six. Yeah. So, so one of the things, uh, remember, um, hmm, yeah, no, unpacking wouldn't work there. Though. You're right, because you don't know how many. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I put in the Slack channel that he doesn't go over in the chapter, but is very regularly used for this sort of situation is the join called join yeah because join yeah, will but it has to be another way if you don't use the join um yes you can unpack everything in the list um in a oh. loop right and then yeah. and then assign it Right? Yeah. So basically, no, yeah. you take your slice, and once you have your slice assigned to a variable, you unpack that variable in a loop and string things together. Right? Would you use something like while true because you don't know how many items are in the list? Well, or you would just say for what you do know is you do know whatever kind of list you have, you take the last thing off of it, right? Minus and what one. left over, you can loop through. So you can use a while loop or you can use a for loop uh, because it'll be a discrete number of things. So yeah. um, either will work. If you're more comfortable with a, a while loop, we, you could do a while loop. Um, both work. Um, I'm not sure what to print, what to... Here. So why don't we do the first that that your your um, list slice there uh, is is great, right? We know that it's returning the values we want, so we can yeah. pull that out maybe and assign that to a variable. Not not that piece with the the spam. Oh, I was going to delete that. Yeah. 
you want me to delete that? Okay. Uh, but we don't need the print right now because what we're okay. trying to do is process the data instead of printing it, right? Okay. Yeah, just assign it to a variable. So remove the print. I'm going to put that there. So I'll put this up here. Okay. So assign the spam, assign it to a variable. Uh, Right, so just don't call it a spam, please. Yeah, no, no spam. <laughs> <laughs> might order for you if you call it spam. <laughs> um, variable equals right, and then your spam slice, right? So spam, spam, yeah. spam slice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Zero and then number. Uh huh. Number. Okay. Uh, you don't need a parenthesis. You don't need that parenthesis. Oh. Okay. Okay. So just just let's quickly review. What is that? What does what is variable going to represent now? Um, it will represent. Uh, it's both apples, bananas, and tofu, but it's a slice. So that's a list. Zero, it's a slice. Right. It, well, it's a list, right? It's yes. a list. So variable is a brand new list, and that list has apples, apples bananas, and, and tofu. For our example, you know, but right. if our if our list had apples, bananas, tofu, carrots, and cats, then it would you know, then it would be everything but the cats. But yes, yes. Right. it's a list. Okay. Well, so, can, I, can I can I just clarify something real quick? I just don't know if y'all are about to go down a different path. The the prompt for this one mm -hmm. is to output a string, not output a list. Exactly, which is why we're we're fuddling with this because if you if you saw the last run of the program, she was outputting a list plus a string, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so now we're trying to work towards how you would take that and make it a single string. Okay, just, just, okay, cool. No, no, that's great. I'm glad, no, it's good that we clarify. <laughs> it's really good we clarify. So um, now, what kind of loop or what, what will we do to get each of these things out? First of all, we need another we need another parking place, right? Because we need a parking place yes. for all of the items we pull out of the list. So yes. you can label it string, you can label it output. I don't know. I'm my brain is fried. <laughs> output is good. Uh, and 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 we probably want to set this equal to an empty string to begin with. Is that what? No, wait. I'm not sure. Yeah, what that's, that's an empty. That's an empty tuple. You want just it, it, empty quotes. Two quotes. Yeah, just two quotes. You don't. No parentheses. No parentheses. Okay. Yeah. No parentheses. Okay. So the steps here. Oh yeah. Smart person commenting, I should comment my code more because then I remember what it did when I went back and looked at it. I'm there with you. So what we want to do is um, go along that sublist and assign it to that string. You mean assign variable to that string? Apples, bananas, and tofu? No, we need to go 
remember how we um, we talked about iteration and looping? Yeah. Um, so we'll need to do a, mm -hmm. we'll need to do a like a for loop to go over that list and get them into the uh, into that string. Or a while loop, right? A for or a while. Either one will work. I think a four is uh, more conventional in this circumstance. Yeah, um, I agree. Like a while will work. I'm sorry, I have to yeah. step away for a second. I'll be back in a minute. So four. Number? Oh, um, you want me to use number? I already used that up there. Well, yeah, so you, you, the reason why you created that, right, is to, oh, no, sorry, I see what you're thinking. I My put problem. that there to get the last item. Yeah. So we have to have some variable here that we count up. What would you like to call it? Or, um... Yeah, you can call it I, which you usually they do, or you can call it something else. Um, item. It's convenient for you. Item. 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 Okay, so like item. For item in, and then. In? Yep. Oh. Range. And range. Range is a function, so you want to put parentheses. Okay. Well, actually, you want to go over the list for item in the list because you want to go over that list and get those values, right? Yes. So you, I don't think you need to use range. You need to use range. Well, how many? How do you know how? How? Um, what's the word? How? Oh, I guess I thought this. Oh, word, you're right. Like you're the, right. The number of how much you. You're trying to figure out so so the the length of this is um, number right number is index minus one the number is the last item the well, length oh the length is yeah. index index is the length it's the length of how do i put this it's the length of the list but we don't want to include that last one, right? So we want it minus one. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, and you already numbered over there. Mm -hmm. Number is index minus one. Mm -hmm. Got it. And this is when we assign it to the output string. Correct. Do you want me to move the output output string down here? No, you can keep it there. Okay. It's just, we're just defining it. This is where you're actually going to assign the value. Okay. So on, in line 14. On line 14, did you say? Or, where, wherever you want, just as long as it's below the four. Okay, right here. And I'm um, indent, indent, right? Yep. Okay. For item in range. So how do we assign something to output? It's not output equals? Yeah, sounds. Oh. Equals. So what's the first bit that we want inside of output? Well, we want apples to be in there. Agree. Um, apples is a string. Mm -hmm. It's going to be zero. It's at position zero. Um, I'm not sure. So at this point, at this point, or do you understand the advantage of having a for loop or why we're using the for loop to do this? 
we're going through it because we have to convert it to a string and we want to go through the list. Right. One at a, one item at a time. So how do I refer to the first item in this list? It's a position zero. Okay. Um, so if, if you just wanted to write that, just write, write apple using the position um, syntax. How would you write apple? Zero. Well, that's the index number. But I'm if sorry. you're trying to tell Python that you want the thing out of the list at position zero, how do you write that? I don't know. It's similar to what you did on line eight. Yeah, look at line eight as a guidance. Right. Oh, you mean a bracket? Um, yeah, so, so remember line 19? Remember where you were getting cat off the end, and so you did spam at minus one? Spam zero? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Except you're not using spam, remember? We reassigned spam slice to that thing on line eight, right? So the, the, the name of the thing we're going through is actually named variable. So you're gonna use variable and then the position. Right, variable at zero. Right. Mm. Take out the bracket. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll take out that bracket. Yeah. Also equal variable zero. Um, but. And you need to close the. the you need to close with. Yeah. The okay. So. This so now, the thing about this loop is, it's not going to ever go to any of the other items if we always reference zero. So we can reference something else instead of just zero. Um, you said don't use single letter variables, like you don't want me to put an I there. Right. We don't want to put an I there, but we actually, typically when you're, you're going through a for loop, up here in your for, item that's why we wrote the word item instead of i right? oh item and then somewhere i'm gonna have to write an item plus one item equals item plus one or something no you don't and that's what makes python amazing is that python is keeping and this is another reason why you want to use a for loop here python is keeping track internally so you see that line on 13 for item in range number. Mm -hmm. First time through, number equals zero. Second time through, or not number equals zero. First time through, item equals zero, right? For item in range. So the range is a list of values. And Python keeps track. Every time the loop turns over, item increases by one. So the interpreter does it for you. So the first time through, item equals zero. The second time through, item equals one. And so on until there's nothing left in the range that you've declared, right? So if you, if you go to line six and you see that variable number, we've told Python that number equals index minus one. And what have we set index to? We've set index to the length of spam. Yes. Okay. So the length is one, two, three, four, but then we're subtracting one from that. So number equals three. Um, and so then if we go down and we're using the variable again on line 14, that means that we are in range three. So Python will go zero, one, two. Okay. 
right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, but, and, and so what, and, and so that's the rest of that, you, perfect, right? So for, for every number in the range, output is going to be equal to list at that index number. So there is one problem. Do you see it here on line 15 around the equal sign? Around the equal sign. Um, Currently, the way each time that you go through this for loop, it's going to overwrite the previous fruit that you had in there. So first it'll be apples, and then it'll be bananas, but we want to build it. We don't want to overwrite it. Yeah, you want to keep adding it. Uh -huh. how, how do you do that? If you remember in the chapter, Jamila and I were talking about the table and yes. how he liked that he put together all those things in the table around the equal sign. Um, right, so they had the like the slash equals and the multiply equals. And so here you want to add stuff, right? It's, it's the other, it's we're basically concatenating. So do you remember the symbol for, for concatenating? Plus? Yeah. You mean plus equals? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Perfect. Equals. Yeah. Equals. Yes. Can I put some space in here? Is it going to? Yeah, space actually, space is a great thing. Space is what you're supposed to put in there so that you can read that better. Yeah. Okay. Now we have one more thing we have to add. Um, because what we're trying to do is say apples, comma, bananas, comma, tofu. Mm. So we have one more thing we have to add to this line. Oh, something, let's see. Is that where he says like an end, put an end, end, or? Yeah. Or so format, to format the print. Right. Something, that was in a previous chapter. Well, so, so if we back up a minute, right, we, we went down this whole path uh, because we wanted to get the individual items out of the list. And the individual items are strings. And yes, you're right. In a previous chapter, we went over string concatenation, right? So you can put two strings together. In fact, you did it on line 20 with the and and the span, that little plus sign. So as Jamila said, what we need to add a comma and a space, we already have variable at item is already a string. So we can add that comma and that space with a little plus sign, right? Because the comma and the space are just pieces of a string. Um, are we ready for the print statement? Is that what you're referring to? Well, we have to we have to build the string before we build this, the print statement. So we need to oh. finish the string off. So after you have the item, we need to add a comma. So how would you add a com a comma and a space to the end of the string? <laughs> comma space, but I would need. There you go. Gorgeous. Exactly. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Awesome. So one of the things that we can do before we build the rest of this is this interpreter will allow us to walk through what we have so far. So maybe we should do that. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. And, uh, and, and just walk through what we have so far so that we're really clear on, on what it's doing. Um, okay. 
So this is all going to be in the definition for the function. Mm -hmm. And I call it down here. And I know I use item and items, but it should know that's two different things. It will know because they, well, two things. One, item is inside the scope of items. So it's a different scope but also one has an S on it and the other doesn't. So they're two different, Python is gonna see that as two different names. Okay. Uh, it's Line 14. It a problem oh, though. you're missing, uh, we all missed it. Yeah, Quit. the colon. 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 Good job, oh, okay. Python. <laughs> picky, picky, picky. <laughs> you can just- I don't know what kills me with that one. I Every time, man. I will step through it forward. It's down here. Spam. It assigned my apples, bananas, tofu, cats. Now it's calling my function. Okay. Index length is four. The end will be three. Variable. Now take a look. Pause for a second here. Okay. Look at what variable is. Notice it's a smaller list. Ah. Bam. Zero to three. Uh, zero to two. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Up to three, but not including three. That's tricky. Yeah. Okay. Output. Is an empty string at the moment. String. Okay, now look at this. See how item and Python has put a value of zero in there? Because that's the first time through the loop. Now look, output has changed. Apple. We're not quite yet to where item has changed. Now okay. look, item is one. Item is one. Okay. Because Python is keeping track of that. There's, there's, it's working. There's two. There's tofu. And there's tofu. So that worked. Now it's telling you the return value is none because as you pointed out, we still need to have the tail end of this and we have to compose our print statement. But what we have tested is that that loop is working the way we want it to. Yep. Okay. So I will edit this code. Yay. This I already fixed that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So once we're done looping through that slice, there's still a piece, right? There's still that, that line 20 right? And so instead of printing, I think what we might want to do is take the insides of that, the and and the spam, and add that, right? On its own line, we need to add that to the uh, stuff we've stashed and output. But you need to be outside your loop to do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, outside the loop. And you're, you're outside the loop because you notice how your indentation has changed? Yes. So you're out. You're good. Okay. But I have to assign something to it. You have to assign and spam minus one to output. <clears throat> Remember how on line 15 you did the plus equals? You just... Yeah need to do that again. It's just you don't want to do it inside the loop. You want to do it when the loop is finished. So output plus equals. You're basically telling Python, okay, you looped through and you did a bunch and now, oh, by the way, I'm a very, at the very end, tack this on. Tack out, this is the caboose. Okay. So um, we can do one of two things here. We can either go straight to the print statement, or if you'd like to run that through to see what's going on there, we can run that through again for the, yeah. It's like holding me in suspense. 
<laughs> it's an adventure story. I absolutely love this thing. Like, it's like these like little mini wins as you see it happening. Yeah. And you're like, yes, I did that right. Yes, I did that right. It's really nice. Well, and I love that you can literally see the, the order in which Python is doing this. I, I really like that, right? Where it's reading it in and how it's reading it in. Okay, so Here we are. now we've got, yeah, now see, look. Woohoo! And cats. There seems to be an extra space there. I think we can probably fix that when we go back to edit the code. Yeah. Because I already put it here, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're ready for our print statement. And you know what's really cool about this? Is we don't have to put anything ugly inside the print statement. We just have to print output. We've stashed everything in output. That's the best part. Yeah, yep. that's my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> So the one thing though, if you look at that print statement is, it needs, yep, perfect. Because it's, it's in the function. Yep. Yeah. No, exactly, that's awesome. I'm going to delete these. Perfect. And I will run it through again. <laughs> it's so exciting. Awesome. Just so you know, Lisa, my cat is very impressed with you. When we all said, yay, she walked over to the computer and rubbed her face on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And no errors. It was beautiful. Oh, wow. That was awesome. Good job. Okay. Yeah. That was really, that was really good. So I think we're going to hold that other code um, for next week, since that one's a uh, definitely trickier than this one. Um, does anyone have any last minute questions or commentary they'd like to make about this week? Then next week, we will just continue on with chapter four. The rest of it just finish off tuples and then work through that other um the last bit of questions and the last um uh, pra practice project um if you have any questions feel free to let us know we will post some information on slack regarding some of our parking lot items that we have and check back into slack because we put the code up into github so that you can access it if you want to see it yourself um if nobody else has any other commentary, you are free to move about the cabin and go about your business. <laughs> and return your seats to the fully upright position. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming. This was awesome. Well done. Well done. Bye. Okay. So we need to go to a thing. <laughs> yeah, we have another thing to go to. Yeah. Oh, that's right. What is the link? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, Emily posted it in. I, I think she did it in Google. Yep. So I'm moving over there. Okay, going over there too. Bye. Thanks again, everyone, for attending. That was great. We hope to see you Thanks, next week. Sir.